This is the issue of different cultures and different countries having different languages, but again, trying to use technology to get to people because you are dealing with multiple languages. So the option that is available to January is not an option that is available to you. Uh, I was thinking about the line, in God you trust everybody else, bring data to the table. And, you know, <laughs> our governments wouldn't be able to fulfill that because in India, one of the biggest challenges is that where's the data? It's not that government doesn't want to give it to us. I mean, I'm sure it would come to that when they had it, but they themselves don't have it. So one of the online properties that uh, we have, and, and first to answer to your question, yes, one of the biggest struggles that we have is the penetration of internet and the literacy levels, that not everybody is literate, uh, and the multiplicity of languages that we have. So there, these are restrictions that we have. However, having said that, I mean, the scale and the size of our population, folks, we are about 150 million that have internet penetration, so that, and that's a very small percentage, but uh, the mobile telephony is 700 million people. The size of the population in our country is 1.2 billion people. And uh, you know, our urban population is about 31% at this point where we are transitioning. Uh, the largest amounts of corruption that takes place is you know, both in rural and in urban, but urban especially is very, for not the big ticket ones, what we call wholesale corruption, but the smaller things that impact our day-to-day -to -day life and interactions with government services such as driver's licenses, birth and death certificates, passports, every one of these is ridden with an instance of graft, you know, money has to exchange hands. But we weren't even able to scope the size of this kind of problem. And so ipaytobribe.com is the first time it works as a confessional, because I'm so irritated that I had this indignity of having been forced to pay a bribe. And it's great that I have a site. So it's non-moralistic. It doesn't you know, say that, oh, you bad person, you've paid a bribe or any of that. But at least you come and report it. And if you look at the instances of reports that have come in, 22,000, uh, Caddy, 22,000 bribe instances that have been reported. And Over the, the total amount is $10 million. In dollar terms, it's USD 10 million. That works out to $450 per bribe. And if you look at the urban population, just per household, if you take conservative estimates and say each household per annum pays one bribe, that works out on an annual basis on just petty corruption of $3 billion. I mean, and this is, you know, and there's no data on this. So this has become a great way of doing this. What we have done is we've started introducing the ability for people who are reporting to say, I want you to send the bribe, you know, this story of mine to the concerned department, the concerned citizen. And what has happened is 40% of them are actually saying yes. This is a higher bar of courage that is required out of citizens because now you can no longer be anonymous. You have to give your personal data because now there's investigation that's followed up. But look at what happens in a country where there is such a deficit of trust. When government responds with concrete action, with measurable action, the surge of hope that comes in is incredible. It's extraordinary. So we have something called the Unique Identification Code, uh, which has started. There's an authority which has started in India. We had a report where the gentleman said, I had to pay a bribe for my father and me to you know, get this thing. We sent this report, and he said, please share this with the concerned authority. The UIDA, the authority of there, actually blacklisted the operator and then is following up with criminal proceedings. Now, the euphoria that comes in and the hope that comes in when people see their governments responding is extraordinary. And progressive departments with progressive cities, when they start doing this, that's when it's like rainwater harvesting. You know, hope kind of actually begins to work. And technology, without technology, we couldn't have done this.